Who's ready for me to wildly mispronounce names? Because I never look up references. Welcome to Ray Rona Does Music, where today we're going to take a look at the second and final album from Korean pop band to anyone called Crush. I don't know why I paused. This album received major praise worldwide, and I might be wrong here with these facts, but from what I looked up, it seemed to be the first K-pop album to breach into the American, well, not really American, but I suppose I should say mainstream Billboard 200. Is it 200 or 100? I have notes in front of me, which are very poorly written, so I'm just kind of winging it. And it also placed sixth for the top 40 pop albums, so it was really much, very much, excuse me, a landmark for you know, the band overall, and K-pop as a whole. But let me just put one thing into perspective right now. We are, of course, looking at the Korean version, which you can see in the thumbnail. That was probably somewhere in this section. Uh, the actual album cover, just to simplify things, I feel like I have to note that because there are separate versions of K-pop albums throughout the genre, and obviously here as well. There's gonna be a lot of rambling in this video, I apologize. K-pop just drives my mind wild. You'll notice recently that, well not really recently, just drawn out throughout my channel, I've been doing a lot of K-pop centric reviews, whether it be Big Bang or Seventeen or Girls' Generation even. The Girls' Generation video didn't do too well. Yikes. But I've just been doing a lot of K-pop albums lately, that's because I always like to look at the dynamic of the amount of members and how the quality stands, whether it be individual member charisma, like I analyzed in BTS's Wings, or chemistry from one member to the other, like I analyzed in Made by Big Bang. And something that definitely makes my job a little easier here is that there's less members in a group like BTS. Always interesting to see bands like BTS jump from like RM to Suga or just any large group of people bounce from one member to the other. But I do very much appreciate the more restricted and I suppose refined format here. It allows for each member to shine a lot more uh, both individually and for more person-to-person -person relationships within the music itself to form. And you'll find that K-pop groups oftentimes have a lot of genuine chemistry between each other's completely outside of the music. So when they get together like this, it really does melt together in a very interesting way. For as basic as it sounds, If I Were You really stood out to me both lyrically and in a very stereotypical way when it comes to songs like this. It just packed that sort of emotional punch that is both long-lasting and made me have to stop and go back twice. Despite the really bare-bones approach, both musically and lyrically, I'll be, I have to admit it as much as I enjoy the track, it very much did feel like a very well-thought-out song that had enough power to last both throughout the album as a major standing point, and then later on just as a song by the, this group that I really do much enjoy and like to go back to. I found a lot of times that tracks that were produced or, um, produced lyrically or musically by CL, stood out to me more than the tracks that were produced by other people. That's not to downplay the quality of any songs or tracks made by other members. I just found out myself personally, I preferred those tracks much more over others. The album itself really comes off as a bit of grandeur and a bit of grounding. So it really comes together to where it seems like there's a lot of almost grandstanding being done here. Just every, everything's grand. Do, do you get that? No matter how many times I use the word. Um, Come Back Home is a very great example of this. The lyrics bounce in between just very mundane things that you can identify with. And then it goes into very individual elements that are played off wonderfully from member to member. Dara manages, is it Dara or Dara? I'm not really sure. She manages to really um, keep the tension going and very fluent, very thin and confined throughout the ends of the choruses, while Minzy and CL share their duties making the choruses come across as something worth going back to over and over, almost as if there's a hidden aspect underneath the lyrics, when in reality it's just a very solid song that does make you have to go back to more than once, as I've stated time and time again so far in this review in just a short amount of time. It's very much a song that manages to stand out as my favorite song personally, and something I feel like is a great, <clears throat> what's the word, example of what somebody should go into for their first song instead of going through chronologically. As with any K-pop release on this side of 2010, there's a solo here, which I'm very iffy about solos. When it came to BTS, I believe it was the Wings release. Yes, it was Wings. 
the solos I was very iffy on. I highly enjoyed some while I criticized some of the others very heavily, and looking back, I feel kind of bad about it. If I ever do a video where it's like I go back and like repair some old reviews, that would be a review I go back to and do that with. But whether it was because of there being six there, just the quality itself, I just, I was really hesitant to come back to another album that had solos on it, whether it was a large amount of solos or just a few. I've seen massively incredible solos from some, while others just made me skip halfway through, but CL absolutely kills it with Mental Breakdown. It comes after a couple slower songs, so it's very much a welcome addition to things. But right after that solo, you're thrust into Happy, which is exactly as the song entitles it as. But going into the lyrics, it's a bit more of a somber story being told. It's a song about the, wanting this person to be happy, even if it means that they're sad without them. I have to say um, that this was the one song that made me really appreciate Dara. I'm just going to go with that pronunciation for her ability to make simplistic lyrics really pop out. It has standout moments throughout the entire discography for the band, but it's moments like this that really make you realize that she is just as strong as the other members of the group, whether it be through, sim again, simplistic repetition, or she actually has that moment to fully shine like the star that she is. Because you're providing a backing part for a song doesn't mean you have to necessarily take the back seat there. You're still able to produce good music there and really make a mark, which is exactly what she did. One thing I do have to note that not necessarily threw me off, but kind of made me go, like, what? Was this album really bounces you around from vibe to vibe, especially towards the end of the album, very both metaphorically and literally when you get hit with Happy and then you go right into Scream. I would actually put Scream in my top three songs, but it does really take you off guard going from a somber track into this, where Bomb and Dara just... Completely take it away, by the way, although, again, it's very jarring. As much as I do enjoy it, it is worth noting that it's just kind of a moment that completely took me off guard. Not necessarily for the bad, but also not necessarily for the good. You get so many elements of pure electronic in the chorus for um, Scream, I believe, and it's good to see so many songs on here stick to one feeling uh, musically rather than go from pure R&B and almost hip-hop attitudes into bursting synths as that could have very easily disrupted things here. I honestly found overall that the album was a very well-done mixture of K-pop elements, influences, and nuances, done supremely well by 2NE1, and it really, really makes me sad that this did turn out to be their final album. I don't remember the exact uh, circumstances off the top of my mind here, but very much so, Crush is a very fitting farewell, in my own personal opinion. For all these reasons and more, to anyone's album crush is getting an 8 out of 10 from me. So, what do you think of the review here? Do you uh, disagree with what I say? Do you agree with what I say? Do you want to stab me in the face just because I look this way? Well, go down in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have any album requests, feel free to hit down in the comments below. I am doing commissions now, without going into any too crazy detail. Uh, a one album commission is $3, I'll do full discographies for one excuse me, for $150 an album. It gets more complicated. If you have me on Facebook, feel free to message me. We can actually discuss things a little further than an outro can provide. But regardless, don't remember, don't forget to like, dislike, subscribe, unsubscribe, uh, share it, tweet it, Tumblr it, Instagram it, tout it. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video, guys.